Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Kelly Slifka from kellystream.com. I want to give you a little bit of a clue to some of our computer models that we take a look, kind of an education as to when I show my computer models when I'm giving out a forecast, what we're actually looking at as far as meteorologists. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I just want to give you kind of a, a, a quick glimpse as to what we look at as far as meteorologists. And I'll take a look at one of the more important computer model output that we get. Uh, this is the uh, 1,000 to 500 millibar uh, thickness. And uh, we use this a lot in meteorology. There are a ton of different variables that we look at, uh, different layers of a computer model that we look at. And you gotta remember uh, the atmosphere is not only just uh, at the surface, it goes up too, so in, in, in forward in time. So that's why we look at computer models. All right, this is one of the more uh, used models. This is an extended computer model. And now when I am showing this on air, uh, this is uh, straight from the government, and I want to show you, you probably are familiar with the L's and the H's. The H's obviously are high pressure, the L is a low pressure. Uh, basically an area of low pressure at the surface, if you uh, measured the pressure, it would be lower than anywhere else around that point. So that's why it's, a, that's why it's centered with an L. Now an area of high pressure is the complete opposite, uh, that's where the pressure is the highest. So if you think about it, as air is sinking, what does it run into? It runs into the ground. So basically that air is piling up and then it just spreads out. So that's what happens under an area of high pressure. So uh, basically the air is actually spreading out. And typically when we get high pressure around, we tend to get uh, fair skies out there. Uh, opposite area of low pressure, uh, that's where the air is very low. So if you think of like a vacuum, what is, happens when a vacuum, the air gets sucked into it. And instead of being able to go down into the ground, it shoots up. So basically, the atmosphere is constantly trying to balance itself out. It's trying to evacuate the air around an area of high pressure while it's trying to suck in the air around an area of low pressure. Low pressure typically is associated with uh, stormy weather conditions, uh, either rain or snow, uh, possibly thunderstorms. All right, so that's the basics with the H's and L's. Now in the Northern Hemisphere, you gotta remember our Earth rotates, right? Rotates around uh, an axis, North and South Pole. So in the Northern Hemisphere, we talk about the Coriolis effect. The air wraps around an area of low pressure in a counterclockwise flow. Now the air is evacuating, or it's being sucked into it, but as it's being sucked into it, it's actually the air is wrapping around it, uh, kind of in a spiral motion, if you will. Opposite the area of high pressure, the, the air is rotating around it in a clockwise fashion, and the air is evacuating, so the air is spreading out, but as it does so, it does so in a spiral motion basically in a clockwise uh, way. All right, some of these other lines, these, uh, these very thin black lines, these are basically just lines of equal pressure. Uh, it, it's going just to connect the dot, uh, measure the, uh, the pressure point, let's say right along the Canadian border here in northern Minnesota, uh, you take that pressure point, would be the exact same here as what it is in southern uh, Missouri. So if you connect those dots, that's where the pressure is the exact same. Same goes with around the area of low pressure, even though the air flows the opposite way. Now the main thing you want to take from the, these uh, lines of equal pressure, these surface lines, these narrow black lines, is when these lines get close together, count on wind, because that uh, very unstable, the air, remember, is flowing this way around this low, this way around the high, so that air is flowing fast in between them as it's trying to balance it out. That's why we have weather. Basically, the atmosphere is constantly trying to balance itself out. Now, these blue dotted lines and then these red dotted lines, they're the same. They're called thickness, and that's why I call this the thickness model. A thousand millibars is basically the surface. Uh, sometimes in the Rockies, the, the surface pressure is actually uh, a little bit uh, less than that, 900 and some. But the thickness, as you get into a colder air mass, the atmosphere is a lot more dense, right? So the atmosphere is thinner. So that's why the thickness is thinner or lower as you go into the colder parts of the northern hemisphere. Same goes for as you go further south toward the equator. The atmosphere is thicker, warm air rises, right? So the atmosphere is thicker. Uh, so these thickness lines in the red are warmer. That's at a given pressure level. I don't want to get too in depth with this, but basically just think of it, uh, you know, where the air is warmer, uh, that the atmosphere is a lot thicker, where it's colder, it's a lot thinner and more dense. 
So what, what do we take from that? Well, basically these blue lines, and this is from the National Weather Service, how they have it detailed. Uh, we call this the 540 thickness line. This is the, the, the last blue to red transition line. Uh, the 540 is very critical uh, as far as predicting what kind of precipitation will fall, whether it be rain, liquid, or snow, or possibly sleet. And there are some other factors that go into that, but that's a general rule of thumb. And that's why we use uh, that 540 thickness line uh, as a pretty good rule as to whether it's going to be rain or snow as far as the uh, precipitation. So that's what I got for the computer model. Of course, uh, the green here is uh, rain. The darker shades, obviously heavier rain, according to this computer model. Now, this isn't always exactly right, but this is what the computer model took all those equations and came out with a forecast. You gotta remember, uh, these computer models are some of the most sophisticated of any computer model in the world. And so as we go through four, and this, this computer model, I can run it out for days on end. So you can kind of see how things move. You know, the thickness lines move, the areas of low pressure, the rain moves through, high pressure moves in behind it, and then you see fair skies. So, uh, that's a basic tutorial on the computer models and what uh, meteorologists look at. If you have any questions, shoot them my way at kellystream.com. Have a great one.